Hello, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury 3 with another analysis stream. This is going to be a bit of a special one, a bit different from the last one, because this is actually kind of a bit of a follow up to the tournament. If you haven't watched the tournament casts, if you weren't watching the tournament during the stream, if you're not watching the tournament casts, go watch those. I mean, you can watch those afterwards, it doesn't really matter, but just watch them anyway. If you didn't watch those, a pattern that came up a lot was hovercraft. Hovercraft turned out to be very popular during that tournament, and it ended up being a bit of a balance concern, something that a lot of people were, well, just like I said, a little bit worried about. Didn't know whether or not Hovercraft was overpowered. And anyone who watched the July tournament would know in July, Hovercraft were so popular that there were several mirror matches. Like, hovers were huge. But even this 1v1 tournament, there were still a lot of Hovercraft play, or rather, Hovercraft players. Felatos in particular, I don't think, I think it was one or two matches where Felithos played Cloaky. Otherwise, Felithos was playing Hovers the entire time. Anyway, main thing that's giving Hovers a lot of strength right now seems to be the Maces. So, this will be something that should be, should be interesting. So, we're going to watch a cast here. It's going to be between Lowry and Google Frog. And it's going to be one on Red Comet, a fairly flat map, one we've seen several times. And it will be interesting to see what happens, because at this point, Loud and Goofrog seem to be trying to test out exactly how how it can work, what can go on, what, what strategies does Life Vehicle have against Hovercraft. Life Vehicle in particular, what can they do against Hovercraft? Because that, that's a pretty important thing. If, if Hovercraft just get free reign, then that needs to be nerfed. But if they don't actually have as big of a problem as it looks, it's just people aren't using the right counter units, then it's just a matter of using the right counter units. So let's see how that goes. So we have the game already started, paused as it started. So Lowry is going for Hovercraft. So we have testing Hovercraft. And Google Frog, on the other hand, is going for light vehicles. The basic thing that's probably going to happen is Lowry is going to go pretty quickly for maces. Like I said, those are fairly powerful. Google Frog, on the other hand, will be interesting to see what they do. Typical thing, of course, for light vehicles is darts into scorchers and then try to harass with scorchers. But this may require something a little bit different. Possibly using more slashers. Possibly even using units that aren't used normally, like wolverines. But we'll see what happens. Let us begin. Right off the bat, we have... Well... Okay, nothing yet. Ah, there we go. Right off the bat, Google Frog going for Dart into Slashers. Very early Slasher, while Lowry going early Dagger. Four early Daggers, and then the Constructors. So Lowry going fairly aggressive, which is not surprising, given that Hovercraft are considered to have the advantage. While Google Frog, on the other hand, just trying to scout out, see what Lowry's up to. Now, I'm not sure if they agreed in advance to go Hovercraft versus Light Vehicles. I don't know for sure. I don't really see anything in the chat about it. Yeah, there's nothing in the in-game chat. They might have discussed it beforehand. But anyway, Google Frog getting slashers up, just getting one so far, and then masons afterwards. Now, slashers are not a bad idea. Against daggers, the thing with daggers is that they run in, deal a lot of damage, and run out. But they don't have a huge range. Like if we check here, the dagger range, 220, compared to the slasher range of 600. Now, also considering the speed and reload time, the Slash is going to be able to get about two or three hits in before the Dagger gets in. That's about half of the Dagger's HP. So two Slashers, that will kill a Dagger outright. Now obviously that's not going to kill the entire group of Daggers, but still, the Slashers are fairly powerful, at least a decent choice. Anyway, Lowry has been spotted out. Google Frog knows for sure that Lowry is going for Hovercrafts in case they didn't discuss it beforehand, which I'm fairly certain they would have. This is probably a testing game. I'm guessing it's a testing game. I'm not totally sure. Anyway, Google Frog does have the slashers and is at this point building further slashers. They're definitely committed to the slasher idea. While Lowry, on the other hand, with those four daggers, getting a couple more, at least getting one more. That dart going around for Google Frog could not get any extra hits in. Doesn't really matter though. Lowry, however, going to the south, and this is fairly important because Google Frog, Google Frog slashers are set up to the north. Google Frog expects Lowry to go around and hit to the north, while Lowry. Deciding, no, I'm just going to go down south. And we look at Google Frog's view. Google Frog actually doesn't know what Lowry has going on. 
Google Frog has no radar. This is entirely line of sight. The Google Frog is getting a slasher in position, but that might not be in time. And there come the daggers. All the daggers are now in place. But it looks like they will... I mean, they'll do something. One of the daggers does die. This is going pretty well for harassment, but not terribly great. However, they did manage to get rid of one metal extractor. Yeah, see, the slashers... So the slashers are doing a pretty decent job when it comes to actually dealing with daggers. Not the best job, and the slashers were out of position. That was a bit of a mistake. But ultimately, if we check the damage... I mean, checking the damage here, we have one metal extractor down for four daggers. Now, four daggers, that is... 360 metal and the reclaim value is you can see 35 or 36 per so it works out to be about 144 metal 144 metal that google frog has in their territory plus the slasher wreckage though so immediately that is google frog so right now google frog basically lost about 200 some odd metal worth of their own things in exchange for 360 metal and basically 140 metal so the cost of the slasher was made up for by the reclaim value of the incoming daggers. At this point, I don't think I'd call that raid successful. However, Google Frog slashes are still out of position, and any additional raids Lowry throws in, they could be very powerful. However, this is important. Lowry switching into maces. Now, like I said before, mace, that's kind of the backbone of the current idea that hovercrafts are way too powerful. I don't know if they're actually way too powerful, but they have been considered to be more powerful than they should be, largely on account of maces. Now, maces, it's important to point out, are, they are meant to be riot units, but they do have a beam. Like, 30, like, 300 damage per second is quite a lot. The idea is to get rid of raiders one at a time really quickly, but it has the effect of also being very powerful as an anti-single target unit. Or, yeah, anti-single target weapon. We'll see where that plays out, but the slashers are going to have a really tough time. Especially two slashes. If there were a few of them leapfrogged, it would be a bit easier, but I don't think Google Frog quite realizes what's going on. At this point, Google Frog switching over to slasher sorry, to scorchers. And scorchers, while they aren't bad against mace, they're the bad choice. Because they are, of course, raiders. That's that's what they do. They raid. While riot, of course, riot units are for anti-raiders. They're trying to get rid of raiders. But looks like Google Frog going on the offensive, and I don't see this working out too well. Google Frog having a couple slashers going up with a few scorchers as well and I think Lowry is making a really good choice by going for mace right now. Google Frog does not appear to be expecting maces. Having gone for a lot of slashers possibly to try to deal with the maces as well. Maces are quite slow but the mace range of 355 compared to like I said slash range of 600 it does mean the slasher has a decent amount of time to hit but it would still take probably about half a dozen slashers to be able to slow down a mace. Like a single mace, let alone a group of them, just a single mace. So if Google Frog had focused a bit more on slashes rather than scorchers, it probably would go differently here. However, that is not the case, and it looks like right now Google Frog just trying to dodge that mace. Google Frog aware of its position, being very cautious about this. Now the mace... <sighs> the mace just very slowly, putting a lot of pressure, forcing Google Frog back. Like, right now, Google Frog... Google Frog right now, setting up more Ravager, setting up, changing into Ravager focus, which these will take about six seconds for a single mace to get rid of. We saw the DPS before. Now the Ravagers are fairly s slow to damage as well, so they won't be able to kill, like, the Ravager and the mace would kill each other about the same time if they were perfectly accurate. The mace is 100, sorry, the Ravager is 105 DPS, the mace has 300 DPS. However, the mace is perfectly accurate, while the Ravager has a massive tendency to miss. Like, it, its projectile is very slow. So the mace would probably be able to dodge that, not necessarily, but at max range, quite likely. So if those Ravagers were to dive the mace, it might work out differently. If that one Ravager dove, the, dove on that mace, still, that's not the most reliable. Now, Google Frog also has, as we see here, five slashers kind of arranged around this mace. These slashers here, they are currently stopped from the looks of it. No, they haven't stopped completely. They haven't actually pulled out their weapons yet. We play again. Yeah, they're stopping right away, and they are in a good position to steal with this mace. And this is what is good to see. Leapfrogging slashes, although this one here did not stop to try to get in the mace while well, the mace is focused on the second one. Of course, this sort of micromanagement is rather difficult to pull off, but it's with well, slashers particularly because they have to stop to fire. However, this does distract the mace. That was the better part of this. It distracted the mace, allowing Google Frog to get in some shots along the south side. And being that that's the only mace, this is kind of the weakness of this setup. Not Whether or not Google Frog capitalizes on it is yet to be seen. However, Google Frog is going for the commander kill. But yeah, Google Frog 
Now, if Google Frog capitalizes on this, the maze has gotten rid of the slasher, but that was one slasher, which actually nearly got rid of Quill too. Not a bad shot there, but that mace got rid of the slasher, but it's out of position. Second mace still has about 30 seconds left before it's complete. Lowry not focusing a lot of build power in there, and maces do take 40 seconds by default. And that's assuming that there's enough metal, which, given that Lowry's commander was constructing, is not necessarily the case, though with the reclaim it may be. However, Lowry's commander does survive this and does get out of the way. The slashers don't really have any clear shots on it. They sort of do, but not really. And Lowry, on the other hand, the, I mean, the factory there, it really isn't... It's not that vulnerable. Google Frog has got the Ravagers. Now, at this point, Google Frog only has two Ravagers, both of them moving into attack. Now, from here, Google Frog could try to go in, hit the mace directly with the two Ravagers, or with Ravager with some slasher support. Try to get rid of that one mace, to, just to keep Lowry's mace numbers down. Because if Google Frog manages to do that, Lowry will have a much harder time breaking through Google Frog. Eventually, Google Frog will probably build defenses. Google Frog really likes to build a lot of defenders, especially on this map, usually in the center somewhere. When that happens, the mazes are going to be... Actually, they're going to be weakened as a result of the defenders. But when that happens, having fewer maces is going to make it a lot harder for Lowry to get through it. Now, at this point, Lowry only has the one mace. The second mace is under production. 25 seconds are left before it's done, assuming nothing is done to it. Now, Google Frog moving in with the Ravagers, and it looks like that Ravager not just moving north, everything trying to attack the south side, get rid of these solar collectors, and possibly get rid of the commander. A little bit hard to say if that'll be successful, though. It looks like the Slashers are getting somewhat distracted. The commander able to get away, and Lowry... Actually, 38 metal. They are reclaiming. But the south side has been basically destroyed. And Lowry pulling back, pulling their maces together, and then moving in for a counterattack. Now, at this point, with the amount of Ravagers and maces coming in here, the Ravagers... These Ravagers, they'll need to go around here... Possibly hitting one mace at a time, though. The first Ravager already being hit by a mace and not getting any shots in. The Slashers are also moving at the moment. They are not stopped. Everything's trying to retreat. So these maces are going to get a lot of free hits, and as the Ravager... This, this Ravager won't even survive to kill, to hit the mace once. Okay, I'm slightly wrong. It survives only to hit the mace once. However, this Ravager as well... It's able to hit the mace a couple times, but these Slashers... That's the thing. With the Slashers, it becomes difficult because you can't easily just leapfrog them. Not with four slashes, at least. So that's what I mean. The Ravager can't easily get the shots in on the mace. The maces have been damaged, but now further maces are being constructed. And with that, Google Frog attempting... Actually, Google Frog having to hide their commander in order to avoid getting hit, killed. And given that their economy is around 20 metal each, it's important. However, Google Frog... One important thing to point out, Google Frog is expanding to the north as they do this. So right now, Google Frog getting expansion to the north, getting defense to the north... Google Frog's strategy appears to be to try to take the north while distracting the south. Break Lowry south, which was successful, but now has kind of been aborted. But also take the north at the same time. Lowry as well taking the north. Though Lowry's north is much safer. Google Frog not taking their protected south at this point. Probably because the maces are right there, and Google Frog likely expects an attack to be coming along the southeast side. Lowry has already done an attack at this game, so it wouldn't be unreasonable to suspect something like that would happen. Anyway... Google Frog is, let's see, they're setting up decent defense in the south as well, but at this point we are moving into, I wouldn't like to say consolidation phase, but because Lowry switched heavily into mazes early on, Google Frog deciding not to raid as much, deciding just to build up, getting more Ravagers. But Lowry at this point, Lowry now realizing getting some radar up, knowing where Google Frog is set up. Well, Google Frog setting up a pillar for Stardust, most likely. And at the same time, Google Frog aware of what's going on in the south side, not aware of any of the construction over to the north that Lowry has set up already. So right now, Lowry is in a position where they have... They have four maces, three of which are deployed, one of which is under construction, and a halberd coming in here, and I think this halberd is going to be what breaks it. Because the maces we saw so far weren't able to engage too readily. I mean, the maces... Let's double-check the speed as well. So the speed of the Halberd, 3.2 compared to 2.1 for the Mace, and 2.8 for the Slasher, which means the Halberd can actually catch up to the Slasher. The Mace can't keep pace with the Slash Slasher can actually kite the Mace. The only thing is the Slasher can't deploy in time to hit it. The Halberd, however, can keep up with the Slashers, and the Ravagers are not going to be able to hit it. The Ravagers' projectile is just way too slow. The Halberd will not be damaged. 
So ultimately, this halberd going on the southeast side, and this is why a Google Frog, like I said, did not build here. Even though Lowry has built along the equivalent, Google Frog not building over here because Lowry is, well, Lowry already did this harassment and is doing it again. Google Frog expected it, though did not build any defenses over here in this choke point in order to actually account for it. Also, to point out, Google Frog surprisingly not addressing this, even though they did see what's going on. Actually, their radar does show these maces. This is. On Google Frog's radar, that mace just got out of the radar. Nothing is dealing with this, which is rather surprising. I think Google Frog might have been focusing. Like, where is Google Frog focused right now? Google Frog is focused uh, kind of on the main base, but even then, they are not really focused on this. They're focused on the production. They're focused on getting. Well, they're focused on this front line. Getting rid of this one mace, but. Their base is being heavily attacked, and I think if there's anything, at this point, Goofrog and Lowry were nearly even, but at this point, Lowry pushing ahead, taking the west side as well, taking that northwest side. Completely, there's nothing going on here. This is completely unmolested. Goofrog has not tried to harass this whatsoever because Goofrog has been very focused on slashers, very focused on defensive play, but not consolidating the southeast side with that defensive play. So that harassment there with the halberd breaking in there, that looks like it's going to be very big. And at the same time, we do have the center of the map. Raptors are getting rid of a mace, but this halberd, that is the key thing. And the mace is over here. They are able to get rid of... Well, actually, able to do some damage. But at this point, Google Frog of two-thirds of the economy of Lowry. Two-thirds. So, And despite that, Lowry doesn't even lose a metal extractor to this, and all this damage is happening in Lowry's territory. Now, finally, this halberd is going to be likely going down, although if it stops attacking it, once again, if... When it's under attack, Halberd should not themselves attack. It's a key thing about Halberd. I'm kind of surprised players don't do that more often. Doesn't matter though, because that did still break the line, pulled Google Frog's forces out of position, and allowed that mace to deal some damage harassment-wise. Now at this point, Lowry with the mace down here, mace is up here. Lowry could easily cut off Google Frog's commander, take that out, and that would destroy about a quarter of Google Frog's economy, well, Google Frog's metal economy. Not to mention, I mean, the north side is fairly heavily defended, but Google Frog does not have the southeast. Lowry has the northwest, which is, like I said, the equivalent. And Lowry also kind of has the center, while Google Frog does have a Stardust on this pillar. So the south side, a little bit harder to get to. Definitely harder to attack the Stardust. Good position to have it, although, let's see what's defense. Well, oh, defense range isn't bad. Yeah, that, that's really not a bad... That's not a terrible range. So this, these metal extractors are pretty well protected, but even then, it doesn't matter too much. And it looks like Lowry also trying to get the Stardust, and more importantly, going to the north... Now, also expanding the north as well. This is more just taking the territory, trying to see what's going on, and taking as many metal extractors as they can, while Google Frog being very coy about taking them. They're retaking the metal extractors in their main base, and this is really important, actually. I've got to just pause for this. This retaking lost metal extractors, I've never really pointed out too much before because it's kind of an assumed thing, but for any of the newer players out there, this, doing this, is the difference between a good player and a bad player, broadly speaking. Rebuilding your metal extractors when they get destroyed is extremely important. I forget to do it all the time, and I know a lot of other people do, but it's one of those things that separates the good players from the bad players. The good players will always rebuild their metal extractors. They'll keep on top of that, even as they get harassed. Whereas, not even bad players, just not as good players. The metal extractors don't get rebuilt. This is really key. You want to keep your economy up as much as possible. Rebuilding the metal extractors is part of that. Even if they get destroyed, as long as they're up for about a minute, they paid for themselves. It's fine. And if they are getting destroyed a lot, consider investing in defenses. Invest in some defenses, maybe stake out some units there, but you want to have your metal extractors rebuilt. This is key. Anyway, that aside, aside. Google Frog going in for the... Okay, so let's analyze the positions right now. So Google Frog going for a lot of Scorchers, which is a really risky strategy considering the amount of maces on the field. There are nine maces. One in production, but eight on the field. Five in the center of the field. The remaining maces... Where are the remaining maces? Okay, there's one to the south, one in, in Lowry's base. Actually, two to the south. Sorry, there's one here and one here. So that is that is a lot of maces compared to a dozen Scorchers. This is going to come down pretty much to whether or not Google Frog is able to avoid the maces, which is not easy. The only real way to avoid the maces is to go to the north side of the map. And Google Frog does not have the Scorchers on the north side of the map. Now at this point, Google Frog also building Wolverines. A little bit unconventional, but it is not a bad idea, necessarily. I should actually point out, I was 
when I was checking for what game to use for this, there was another game that played between Google Frog and Lowry, which Google Frog was using Wolverines to pretty good effect against Lowry's maces. However, in that one, Lowry didn't focus as much on maces, so I wasn't sure if it was a good game to show for the analysis based on the fact that maces are the core unit for Hovercraft right now. They're the one that's making Hovercraft feel so powerful. But anyway, Wolverines are not a bad idea. They do act as area denial after a while. The mines do make it difficult for the maces to get around. They kind of slow them down because the maces are shooting at the mines as well. But at this point, there's only two Wolverines right now, or three Wolverines, sorry, and they haven't started deploying mines anywhere on the map. So whether that'll work remains to be seen, but Google Frog getting these Scorchers basically running straight into the maces. This is not going to work out. Lowry's going north of the maces. Google Frog's going north of the Scorchers. And the Wolverine's trying to slow down the maces. The maces are basically trying to dodge out and fire on the mines. Ultimately, though, it's only three Wolverines. More of them are being constructed, but not very many. And at this point, the only frontline units are 11 Scorchers, which are hard countered pretty much by five maces. This is not looking good for Google Frog. However, with some clever harassment, it could work. Like I said, there is... The maces right now, there's only one... Oh, it's two to the south. A dozen Scorchers should be able to beat one mace. But we'll see. At any rate, the Wolverines are not doing a bad job, but it is basically area denial and some slight harassment. At this point, the Scorchers are probably better served going south. Especially as one of the maces running into de defenders... As I mentioned before, maces do not do especially well against defenders, so this is good. This, this is actually what I meant before. Google Frog likes to build defense nests like this. They are very good against defenders, and as it stands, this defense nest here that Lowry has, this, this stinger is the only real threat. Although nearly the Raptor is likely the only thing to deal with it, and that's fairly heavily damaged. But the Scorchers, so it's kind of tricky. Google Frog, if they send the Scorchers down to this area here to the south, Lowry will know and will send their maces over to the north. However, Google Frog can't easily deal with the maces over to the north, which is why Lowry is already sending them there, because the south side is pretty locked down. Google Frog has that on lockdown, it has a bunch of defense turrets set up there, but it's not of anything in the north except these two lotuses and nothing inside the main base. And the Scorchers, which like I said, aren't going to do very good job. Now, Google Frog is setting up defenders along this area here, along the midline. Though I should point out, Google Frog has not yet even taken the southeast side, so Google Frog is taking it at, as we speak, or as I speak here. It, there is a mace in dealing with that, but it's not much. Lowry, on the other hand, taking the north side and doing a pretty good job of it too. The maces are being slowed down a bit by the mines, but honestly, there aren't enough Wolverines to make it that big of a deal. And now with a Brawler Switch, didn't point that out before, but yes, there is a Brawler Switch from Lowry, which, this is not going to be the biggest deal. Not on its own. What it's going to do is more so the harassment aspect. I mean, it does get rid of a Slasher, but it's more that it means... Right now, okay, Google Frog basically right now does not have an easy time with this. Google Frog has Wolverines trying to slow down the maces, which aren't doing a very good job of that. Doesn't have levelers or anything to actually deal with the maces too directly. Like, that'll actually hit the maces. And the Scorchers, once again, are hard countered. And the problem is, if they try to build Crashers, well, now there's a bunch of maces that'll stop the Crashers, but the Crashers would stop the, the Brawlers. Which is a bit of a big deal. So right now, Lowry has a very powerful mix, and Google Frog's best bet would probably be either a factory switch, just to have the extra productivity, or possibly levelers... Levelers just pushing in. It's counter to say. Scorches, however, are... Tr like, okay, actually, wait. Okay, this is what the Wolverines are good for. You notice before, it's a bit hard to tell, but these, the claws here, the Wolverine mines, they're actually going to be able to not just not so much block shots from maces, but the maces are going to fire on them and not on these units. So, with enough Wolverines firing enough claws into the mace ball, Scorchers could just come in and tear the mace ball apart as the mace ball is distracted firing at all these random claws all around the map. They're just distracted by them. And it's a brief distraction, but it's enough that it gets them off the Scorcher and allows the Scorcher to get that much closer. However, that's not what's happening. Google Frog not combining these, just setting up Wolverines basically to try to knock out as much of the mace health as it can. But the Scorchers aren't helping out. The Scorchers are coming from the south, but there isn't really much of a flank here. At the same time, there are Wolverines trying to take out the southern defenses, but it isn't much. And now, now we have the Wolverines and Scorchers working together, which is actually working fairly well. Well, almost fairly well. I mean, it's working out better than it would have without the Wolverines, but even with them, there is still the fact that this brawler is a big problem. 
And the defensive to the south, this is more important. The defense is being destroyed, but actually, it's not even more important. If Google Frog still had raiding forces, it'd be more important, but as it stands, it's not. And Google Frog losing the Wolverines. Google Frog's losing the Wolverines to the Stardust. Google Frog has no crashers to deal with the Brawler here. The Brawler basically has free reign. It's focusing on the mines, but it can do whatever it wants. Lowry repairing the Brawlers that were damaged and pushing all their metal into the factories. And Google Frog, while they do have some reclaim going on, they really don't have much to work with. They have this south area here. They have their main base, which is very heavily under siege. The southeast has just been taken. Google Frog's just now grabbed that. But even then, at this point, I think Lowry basically has this. Unless Google Frog does set up some crashes, gets rid of the Brawlers. And I still think Leveler Wolverine is probably a better mix than Leveler Scorcher. It would require some testing. But I don't think that Leveler... Sorry. Not Leveler Scorcher. Scorcher Wolverine. That's what I meant to say. Scorcher Wolverine can work in theory. But it requires a fair amount of coordination. And that hasn't happened so far. And now Halberds. Okay, here's the thing with Halberds. The Halberds here... They, of course, have shields. At least when they're... They're not shields much. But they don't take as much damage when they're not attacking. So put on hold fire and run through this minefield... I mean, these mines normally deal 200 damage, roughly. But the halberds, if they're defended, they take about 50 or so. So the halberds should be able to just run straight through this. And basically take, I don't know, 200 damage. Maybe. Like, if all the little missiles off the claw hit. And that would clear out this entire minefield. Because right now, the maces can't easily come through here. That's a lot of damage they're facing down. The Wolverines have made a nice minefield, and this is where the Wolverines become strong. It's where they have the minefields already laid out. Google Frog hadn't really laid those out before, but now Google Frog is laying those out. And it's doing a decent amount of damage. However, here come the Halberds, and they are doing exactly that, moving through without attacking. Just on hold fire. Very nice to see that. Lowry doing a very good job there, getting those Halberds in. That breaks up the entire minefield, which, if maces were to come through, would allow them through no problem. And the Halberds in the main base pretty much sealing the deal. No main assault units right now for the light vehicle factory pushing in, and a lot of people would argue that there are no main assault vehicles for the light vehicle factory. I I gotta say, I don't totally disagree with you. It is kind of hard to see that. Because, I mean, the light vehicle factory, what do you have? You have Scorcher. I mean, that works pretty well in numbers, but it's not much of an assault unit. It's, it's a raider unit. It dies really quickly. It's made of paper. Slasher, that's not an assault unit. It's a good defensive unit, though, but it's not really an assault unit. You can, in numbers, push it forward and kind of do a rolling defense with it. The Leveler and the Ravagers are probably the best candidates, but the Leveler, 1100 health, not great, not terrible. Deals 220 damage every shot. Well, 122 damage a second. This is 105 damage a second, so it deals a little bit more damage than the Ravager, but considerably weaker and about the same cost. It's also considerably slower. Leveler is 2.2 speed while the Ravager is 3.0, so it's, no, about 60% as fast. Well, actually more like 70%, but still. Not much slower, but still slower. That is not the best combination, but at the same time, with the Wolverines allowing for a lot of area denial, that does mean the levelers can go around as the maces are getting messed up, or just in general, with that, with those mines there, either slowing down the units or just damaging them, one or the other. That does mean that the leveler doesn't have to worry so much about speed, and we did point out before that, or I did point out before, 2.1 speed for the mace, so levelers can actually kite maces. The range difference is a problem, 290 for the leveler with 350 for the mace. Yeah, the leveler's 290, while the mace is 355. So the leveler alongside the wolverine would be an, an interesting strategy, and it would help with the halberds too, because once the halberds start attacking, then the levelers destroy them. They just tear them to shreds. Scorchers could also tear them to shreds, but they do have splash damage. Very important to point out, halberds do deal splash damage, and there are scorchers. But as mentioned, there's like, the brawlers. That brawler switch was very powerful there. Lowry did exactly what it needed to be done, and at this point, Google Frog basically has no easy options. They are trying to rebuild a caretaker in the center of the map, while Lowry, on the other hand, has added an air factory because why not? Just in case air dominance, I suppose, or for extra bombers because they might need it. The scorchers. I just don't understand what the fascination of the scorchers was. In the previous game, the one that I didn't show here, but the one that I checked beforehand, Google Frog actually went very heavy on the Ravagers. It was like Wolverine, Ravager, actually switched to Heavy Tank as well and added in Reapers. And it actually is a lot of factories for both sides. But that 
That worked out only after a massive, massive defensive war. That was a huge amount of defenses built along the center of the map. That was... That pretty much sealed the game. That was what did the game in. And ultimately, it's what... I mean, Goofrog was able to break through, but there was a lot of defenses, a lot of Thunderbirds being built, stunning out everything. None being built right now, but he had a lot of Thunderbirds being built. Goofrog getting that second light vehicle factory up. Because that first one is just about to go down, and down it goes. At this point, Goofrog... I think is about ready to throw in the towel. They have 15 metal pushing into this factory, trying to build it as quickly as possible out of 28 metal, which isn't bad. And another character coming in, just to add a little bit more, but at this point, five brawlers in the field. Lowry has twice the economy. Goofrog basically lost it. Like By not building the southeast side, Goofrog basically lost it. They didn't have the economy to keep up with the mace production originally, and they really didn't have... When they were trying to deal with the maces, I'm a bit surprised to go for leveler. I mean, the health thing kind of makes sense. I can understand that. That I can totally understand. So I could see why they didn't do that, because the mace deals 300 damage, and the mace is actually is 400 metal. So the levelers are still kind of worth it, like a couple levelers to deal with the mace. That's not quite worth it, but it's close. If it's in your own territory, it's worth it. So on defense, it makes sense. And the wolverines are interesting for the area denial, and also, like I said, for distracting the maces, for pulling their lasers away from the units. Like either they're focusing on the mines, or they're focusing on the units and taking a lot of damage from the mines. One of the two. So it does leave them less likely to actually hit your units, leaves your units more time to hit them. But it didn't seem like there was a whole lot of coordination there. So it appears that Light Vehicles does have a bit of a micro requirement in order to deal with maces at this point from the Hovercraft Factory. Maces not so much, and now the Brawler is just finishing off. One of the Crashers is doing a pretty good job, and I should point out, Brawlers have been nerfed since the 2v2 tournament, where they were used extensively. And that is... I mean, as you can see, they're less accurate, they don't deal as much damage, they aren't not as fast, they used to be... Well, actually, used to be 3.7 speed, now it's 3.3. I think the damage was, was reduced, the accuracy was reduced, certainly. And the Crash is getting a lot of shots, and as a result of that, yeah, still the Mace is able to come in. Lowry has won this game. There's no denying that. Google Frog trying to rebuild as quickly as possible with only 12 metal left. Having lost the entire southeast side, there isn't much to be said. <sighs> Except that Google Frog probably could have used better coordination. I still think levelers with Wolverines are probably worth experimenting with. Ravagers make some sense if they're using if you're using them to dive into the maces, it kind of makes sense. Doing that's a little bit risky, because of course the maces may lure you back, or lure the Ravagers back into your base. But at least you're going to hit them. And like I said, in terms of DPS, the maces and Ravagers are about even if the Ravagers hit every shot. Anyway, that is game. Google Frog throws in the towel, and I guess that's, that's tonight's stream. That is tonight's analysis. I hope you enjoyed that. I mentioned I missed anything, please let me know politely. And the comments, I probably missed some stuff because the main focus was on the way the Wolverines were attempted to use as a mace counter. Which, like I said, Wolverine with something else could probably work pretty well, but a large part of it, I think, was the lack of economy. Google Frog did rebuild a metal extractor, which was good, but they didn't build a metal extractor over to the south side. Which, even though they were raided out, a few extra defenses, like two or three defenders and a laser turret there, probably would have done the trick to stop that mace. Or at least it would have slowed it down a fair bit and then units could have gone in. But no units were dealing with it. It was... Units were out of position for dealing with that. Even near the start, where the first harassment attack came in with the daggers, the units were out of position. Google Frog just kept losing that southeast side. That probably really slowed down Google... Like, that would slow down Google Frog, for sure. But what probably did them in was just the fact that the maces were not being countered directly. The mace numbers were allowed to grow, and then from there, critical mass of maces made it difficult to do anything once the brawlers came in, and the brawlers could just wreak havoc, despite their nerfs. I hope you enjoyed that. That was that. And just a small bit of news for the stream. So on Saturday, I am going to be doing a, another Nauta tournament. I did one several months ago. This just at request of Polar Gaming. Like the Nauta folks just asked, Hey, you did the tournament last time. You want to do it again? And I said, Yeah, sure, why not? So I'll be doing that on Saturday. Then that'll replace my normal cast. It'll be starting at 8 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, which is 4 p.m. UTC. No, 3 p.m. UTC. So let's double check the timing. But I'm fairly certain that it does start at that time, which, like I said, like 1500 UTC, which is about 3 p.m. Let's see here. 
sorry, it's 4 p.m. GMT, so it's actually going to be 9 a.m. PDT. So noon, Eastern North America, 4 p.m. in Europe, and Australia, I'm sorry, it's probably going to be about midnight. That is going to be double elimination, best of one for most games. Like I said, it's going to be this coming Saturday, September 27th. Also, bigger piece of news, because of some complaints that I got during the tournament and my own considerations, I did some testing on Hitbox, hitbox.tv. It's an alternative to Twitch TV, kind of started up a few months ago from what I gather. Big advantage that it has, or at least has for now, there's some cynicism about this, or some skepticism about this in the long term, but for now, it has very low delay, like five, two to five seconds or so. It's extremely low delay compared to Twitch's 20 to 30 seconds. Now, of course, for a tournament, I'm going to be still adding an artificial delay because I don't want the people playing to be able to watch the stream and use it. But for the case of exhibition match casts or analysis casts, for people being able to chat in, it's easier if that is done on a stream that has low delay. The other advantage, either due to Hitbox technically or because Hitbox is just new, not as many people are on it, it seems like Hitbox doesn't actually have any issues with streaming for non-partner streams. I don't know if that's not throttling them, because apparently Twitch does. But at any rate, I seem to be able to get higher upload rates, which means I can get higher resolutions and frame rates and all that. And people are able to download it. Like we had some people like Skazi, for example, was complaining that they couldn't watch Twitch. They just couldn't. Even when I was 1500 kilobits per second, which it is now, they were still getting buffer problems. And in Hitbox, they had no buffer problems. So I'm going to just test that probably for the month of October, see how that goes. The October 2v2 tournament will probably be on there if it's if the tests are going well. I'll confirm that closer to the date. But yeah, check on hitbox.tv slash shadowfury 33 for October. And I'll any of my Twitter posts and anything that I post in 0k chat or for the other games when I post about it, I'll be linking to Hitbox. That will be possibly a temporary change, possibly a permanent change. I don't know. That's why I'm testing. But yeah, watch that. Let me know how it looks. Let me know if there's any issues on that side when I'm testing on it. Otherwise, that's going to be it for me tonight. So thank you all for watching, everybody, and have a good night.